Hello everyone, welcome back to Princeton Microgreens. Uh, today we're going to be growing some nasturtiums, um, which is one of our chef's favorites. Um, you know, we, we sell to a lot of restaurants and we get a lot of requests for this. It looks just absolutely beautiful in the food. Um, it's, it's got a really sharp peppery taste, but um, it's just got a really elegant look. It looks beautiful on top of salads and such. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this today. Um, I normally use uh, uh, these little one inch trays for most of our microgreens, um, but for nasturtiums what I like to do is um, I like the tray a little bit deeper um, because we're going to bury um, the seed in, uh, you know, pretty deep in here um, and let it um, really get a good root structure. Um, so I like a little bit thicker of a coir uh, as, as a foundation here. So when we do this I, I traditionally go with the, the little bit bigger um, of the trays here. So uh, of course we have our trays with the holes at the bottom and our solid tray here. So I'm going to put that in. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up with coir really quick. I really like to use this cocoa coir because it doesn't really have, um, or I should say it doesn't at all have any nutrients or you know, chemicals or, or anything. It's just raw coconut husk. And so that allows us to control everything that uh, is basically going into, you know, our microgreens essentially, right? So sometimes, I mean, I know a lot of people like growing with, with soils and, you know, pro mixes and everything. Uh, I, I just really prefer the coir here because it's just a raw, natural hide from the coconut. And uh, we control what's going in and out, like I said. So let's, let's see here. Okay, nice little foundation here. Again, we're going to bury this this seed. Uh, what I usually do is I do about 50 gram of uh, nasturtium seed here. Um, got this nice little bucket here. I uh, use this. Uh, I was talking about this in a previous video. We use this for pea, sunflower, popcorn, and our nasturtium seeds, and uh, you know holds a beautiful, uh, nice little scoop here. Let's zero out this scale really quick. Let's see here. There we go. Zero. Again, about 50 grams. And then we just sprinkle them right on. They're so big that you can just kind of sprinkle them right on. So. All right. You want to give them a little bit of room. You don't want too much of this seed because um, they grow pretty big and they'll start getting entangled with each other and, and so forth. So this is, this is probably pretty good where we want to be. Looks good. Looks really good. And then we're going to put one more layer of coir right on top of that as well. Not too thick, not too thin. Nice little quarter inch to half inch of coir. And then we'll fill in the holes here in a second. I don't, I don't find that I need to um, soak these at all. I just give them a really good soaking after we plant them. My hands a little bit here, make it a little easier on us. There we go. Little piece 
piece of something. It's all covered up. Now this grow typically takes anywhere between, I'm going to say three to four weeks um, before we can start harvesting. So you need to make sure that you know you account for that within your grow cycle, depending on what you're growing for. If you're growing for a restaurant or you know you're just growing for yourself. If you're growing for yourself, I recommend not planting this much. This is actually quite a bit. Um, you're going to get a good good yield um, from a tray uh, this size. Um, you can actually, if you really wanted to, uh, I know a few people who are actually, when they plant nasturtium for themselves, they only plant like a handful of seed um, and just kind of spread it on there. You know, may, you might even count like a dozen to two dozen seed tops is what they plant and that's good enough for them. So, good. So it's all covered. Looks good. A little bit more right there. Very good. All right. Corner away. And we are going to water really quick. And again, you want to give it water, uh, enough water to basically um, let it kind of, uh, you know, survive, uh, I'd say at least, you know, four or five days um, with weight on it. There's no point of lifting your tray up every day and giving it a nice mist. I mean, you can do that all in one, all at one time. So we'll mist it pretty good here. Get nice and watered. You want that water to really soak into that seed in there, so we're gonna mist quite a bit here. You notice we water quite a bit, but at the same time. It doesn't actually go through the tray. You actually don't have water dripping underneath. See? So if you have water dripping underneath, you know you've watered too much. So should be plenty good. All right. All right. So now that we put the seed in, um, we covered over top with a bit of coir. Um, we watered it pretty good. I'm uh, going to go ahead and put another tray on top here. Um, not everybody likes to put weight on it. I like to put weight on it. It, it kind of, it really gives the roots uh, a nice structure underneath, um, you know, with the weight pushing down on it and really allows them um, to grab on and, and, and come up. So I like to uh, put weight on for a little bit, you know, even if it's just, you know, one to three days, depending. So, now that we have weight on it, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put it up here for a few days. Now, uh, with nasturtiums, um, what's gonna happen is after we go ahead and we have it and uh, you know, with weight on it, we'll pull the weight off in a few days. Um, but every once in a while, you'll start to see on top of the, uh, the soil, uh, the cocoa core, I should say, uh, that you see little spots of mold. Uh, that's actually pretty common. Uh, the nasturtium seeds really like to uh, get a little bit of mold. So what we do is that we mix some antifungal spray here. Um, and we'll use this a lot with the nasturtiums. Um, when they're growing, uh, you'll, you'll notice that we'll spray on a lot as we go through the video. Uh, but it's, it's just on top of the coir. It doesn't really get into the plant at all, so you don't really need to worry that much. Um, but you'll really definitely uh, want to put something like this together. Uh, I think we do about um, about two tablespoons of this food grade hydrogen peroxide um, to about 1,000 milliliters uh, of water, and uh, you know you just mix it up a little bit. And then whenever you get that little fungal, uh, the little fungal spots, you can just spray right on, and uh, it pretty much takes care of it. So keeps it in control at least at the very minimum. So uh, we'll come back and we'll check that out in a few days. Uh, so stay tuned. Okay, welcome back to day number six of our nasturtium grow. 
Um, I still have weight on it. Um, normally, I don't like to peek at too many of my microgreens. I, I trust what they're doing, um, and I trust my experience what they're doing. Um, but nasturtiums are a, a little bit different because they take so long to germinate and, and kind of pop up through that medium. Um, I like to, you know, every once in a while, every couple of days, um, go ahead and lift up and see where they're at in the process. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take the weight off real quick and go ahead and take the top tray off. And as you can see here, they are just starting to poke through. Uh, this, is, this is a really good phase uh, right now where um, they're, they're going to, I'd say, probably two more days um, with weight on. Um, and we're going to be able to take the weight off. And uh, the reason why I really uh, I keep the weight on for a long period of time is because what happens is, is they'll go ahead and lift the coir up um, as they're uh, popping out of the coir. Um, and so you'll have this like shelf of, of coir kind of floating in the air. You kind of kind of poke it all back down and so forth. Um, when you keep weight on the entire process um, while they're, they're starting to poke up out of the coir, um, it really, it keeps the, uh, the coconut coir down. Um, so um, now if you look a little closely here, I'll do a close up. Um, we're starting to see a little signs of, of, of mold. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and spray it down really quick. Um, this is pretty common with nasturtiums. Um, you kind of get a, like a little spider webby, uh, kind of looks like cobweb, uh, really fine uh, mold that got, starts growing on top. The nasturtium seeds seem to, to do that um, in my experience and experience of others I've talked to as well. Uh, so we have a mix of, of antifungal that we, we have here. We do uh, about two tablespoons of 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide. Um, and we mix that with about a thousand milliliters of water. Um, and that should last you quite a while. Go ahead and pump it up a few times. And just a, just a nice light misting of this antifungal. And this will really help. There we go. Um, take control and really limit um, as much as that mold as possible from coming up. Shouldn't affect your plants, um, but obviously we don't want to encourage it to, to just grow. Um, you know, we want to try to kill it as much as possible. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and put the tray back on, put the weight back on, and we'll go ahead and come back in two more days and see what it's doing. All right, see you soon. Hello and welcome back to day number eight of this long process of growing nasturtiums. <laughs> um, they usually uh, take anywhere from uh, three and a half to four and a half weeks uh, is what I tell most chefs. Uh, but we're on day eight now. We're gonna go ahead and take the weight off and let's see what we have here. Yes, this is, this is great. This is exactly what we wanna see. Um, so as, as you see, uh, there, there's no mold. We did spray it a few days ago because we saw a little mold starting to form. So we s sprayed it with our antifungal anti spray that we created. Um, no mold. Uh, it's it's uh, come up out of the medium without bringing the medium up uh, as a canopy, I guess you can say. Sometimes that'll happen because these are very thick stalks. So uh, that's why we keep the weight on for a long period of time. That way, when they start to grow up, it doesn't bring the coir up with it and create this canopy of coir. So now that we've taken the weight off, this is a really good length already. We don't need to inter introduce this to blackout. Uh, these will grow fine right on their own by just introducing them right to light. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Um, first, we would water. I can actually feel this. It's not too heavy. Um, but it's not too light either. Um, I think I'm going to just leave it for a day before I, maybe even tonight, I might water it tonight. Um, but I, I can, yeah, I can get a really good feel much by lifting this up and, and know that this is, doesn't really need water right now. So we're going to put it right back um, on the shelf, introduce it to light, and we'll probably come back and I'd say about two days. We'll try to do every other day here just because this is going to be a, a, a longer process and they don't do too much on a daily basis just because it, it is longer. Um, so we will put this back on the shelf, like I said. There we go. And we'll see you in a few days. Okay, we are now on day number 10 of our nasturtium grow. Um, I'm, I just took this off the shelf. 
uh, this is this is looking very very good right now. I'm starting to see uh, these nasturtium leaves uh, starting to sprout out, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want to see. They're spread out far enough that they're really not quite entangling with each other. Sometimes if you overdo this, they'll start to you know interweave like one big giant ball of yarn. <laughs> so, uh, but this is pretty good. We have a few that are a little close, but it's no big deal. Um, this is great for where it's out for day number 10. Um, I'm starting to see just a hair bit more of, of the mold that we were talking about. Just very light little um, parts of this. So what I'm gonna do is take this antifungal, pump it a few times, and anywhere that I see the mold, I'm just gonna kinda just, oops, just focus that a little bit here. Really not seeing much, there's just one or two spots, which is good. That means that that's, it's in control, not too bad at all. Um, the, the one thing about nasturtiums is that for some reason, the medium, so it, it appears pretty wet on the top. But if we actually lift up, you'll find that the roots are pretty dry and the bottom tray is pretty dry as well. Um, for some reason, they, they, they just suck the water out of the bottom and the top remains somewhat moist. Uh, none of the other microgreens I have do this. Um, it just happens to be nasturtium. So you want to be mindful of that because if you look at the top and you're like, oh, it looks like there's plenty of water there. Uh, there's actually not. <laughs> it, it's like the bottom part of the coir is dry and the top part is, is wet. Um, at least that's what, I'm, what I've seen in the, my time growing this. So um, I'm going to grab some water here. And I'm going to use some of this nutrient water. Just go ahead and lift up. Just make sure it has plenty of water down here. Probably did about a cup, cup and a half. No problem at all. Um, there's plenty of enough air in here because they're so far apart, unlike other microgreens, which are bunched up, um, that if you do over the water this a little bit, it's not gonna hurt it as much because it's just gonna kind of evaporate out of there. So you don't really need to worry about that with nasturtiums. So now that we watered it, uh, we're going to put this back under the light for another two days and let's see where we're at then. All right, see you shortly. We are now on day 12 of our nasturtium grow and it is amazing. Uh, this is so beautiful. These dark, vibrant green colors are some of my favorite to grow. Um, I mean, just look at this. This is it's incredible. Um, it's, it's, we're almost there guys. Um, I'm going to say probably another two to three days and this is going to be absolutely ready to harvest. Um, what you're going to find is that when we harvest these, you can actually, after you clip all the leaves off, you can let them go and they will actually continue, um, to grow and you can harvest them again. The problem is, is right now you'll notice that the leaves are very straight and flat, almost, I mean, like a, like a plate. I mean, they, they are just super flat. But once you clip these and they start growing again and you start to get um, the leaves that come up out of the middle and, and re-sprout again, the problem is, is they get very rigid and, and wavy, um, kind of ugly looking in a way. Uh, they're just kind of like really sharp edges that they just don't look as pretty. And it's pretty noticeable. Uh, to, to like chefs and, and things like that. So it's kind of hard to get away with actually selling them as a quality product. Um, however, uh, what we do is, is we sell the first cut to our chefs and then the second cut I actually just save for myself and eat them myself. Um, and then they're usually not good for a third cut. Once you start getting to that third cut, the leaves that grow, they turn like yellow and all kinds of colors that um, they're just not good anymore. So, but we're gonna check this right now, check the water. We actually have still, a, hmm, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of water. Um, at this point, they're growing so fast, I'm gonna go ahead and give it some nutrient water. 
So we'll do that. They've really exploded over the last two days. So that should be plenty enough. I give it about three quarters of a cup. There's still just a tad bit of water in there, so we just needed a little bit more. There you go. And we'll go ahead, take it, put it right back up in the light here. A little empty on the rest of the shelves. We actually just harvested a bunch of microgreens for our market, did really well. Um, but right now we just have the nasturtiums left. So uh, we'll go ahead and give that another two days and we will be back in a few days and see what it looks like. All right. Okay, welcome back to day number 14 of our nasturtium grow harvest day. Um, so I've had these on the shelf now um, for somewhere around 10 days. Uh, today is day number 14th from the day we actually um, sowed and planted these. Uh, and, and these are just, these are perfect. Um, you can see them here. They are absolutely gorgeous. Um, they are rather light though on the light side. Um, they're very um, feathery feeling. So um, they're, they, they're very beautiful. They almost look like mini lily pads um, in a way is um, kind of what a lot of people tell me. So instead of actually using a knife to cut these, um, what we do is we use um, kitchen shears. Um, and this allows you to um, just to cut the stem right off perfectly and go ahead and package them. Um, we use these 24 ounce by volume containers and we'll be able to get about one ounce of uh, nasturtium in here. Pretty good, um, packed pretty good. Um, and we usually sell these for about $8 a container for uh, eight ounces of, uh, I'm sorry, for, for one ounce of nasturtiums. Um, so again, uh, kitchen shears, we have our scale here as well, and uh, we also have uh, our labels that we printed out on our computer. And we will go ahead and get started with this. Oh yes, we also have our um, humidity packets here too, which uh, basically uh, keep the moisture, uh, it sucks up the moisture in there as well to make sure that these last as long as possible when in the refrigerator. So we take our packet here, go ahead and put in one of these food safe packets. Again, our um, containers are actually 100% uh, compostable, food grade, are made from cornstarch. Uh, so they basically just, uh, people will put them in their, their compost pile and then they'll just you know melt within a few months. So, um, so anyways, uh, we zero scale out and then we just begin clipping. Um, and where to start here? There's, there's so much. <laughs> so uh, you can actually see in this picture here that we actually have um, in between the two leaves that come out, you'll see here, um, we'll have uh, the main leaves that you clip here and then you'll kind of have in between um, some baby leaves as well. And what winds up happening is um, they'll grow um, after we clip this and we can actually we can actually um, let these grow but the problem is is once we make these first cut for these for these bigger ones here what winds up happening is is these uh, little tiny ones will start to yellow um, I'm not sure exactly why uh, not all of them they just they don't tend to grow as healthy after we make our first cut. Um, I don't know if it's because we're damaging the plants. Um, I mean, they're still edible, but they're just, you'll, you know, the leaves will actually get like a little wavy and a little crisp, kind of a crispness to the outside edge. They'll start to yellow. Um, and that's with uh, these little baby um, ones that are growing up through the middle here and you'll notice that. So what I do is, is after we harvest it for the first time um, and you know make our sale, I let it continue to grow um, and then these little baby ones again, um, they'll get a little bit bigger here. Um, I'll cut those for myself and I'll throw them in some salads and everything along that line. So.
Now you can see here, I've actually clipped quite a bit and put them in here. And we aren't even hitting one gram on our scale. Um, that's why I tend to um, sell only one ounce because you get a ton of these things for one ounce, which in one ounce is equal to about 26 grams, just in case you weren't quite sure. But we have so much here. We planted quite a bit. This is actually really beautiful. Um, I'm hoping to get two containers of these, of uh, these one ounce containers to get like, that would equal about $16 in containers here. Um, and then what also what I try to do as well is you'll see me when I clip these, I clip very low. And this, this whole stalk right here has plenty of flavor. Um, and it's very crunchy and very delicious as much as the leaf is. On top of it, we have a little bit of weight in here as well, right? We're not just clipping off the leaves and selling the leaves. Um, we're actually clipping the whole, the whole branch off, I guess you could say. So... I keep on, you'll see me keep on tapping it to make sure that the scale doesn't go off here. <laughs> we don't want the scale to go off on us. Um, that's a real beautiful one. Very nice, thick stalk here. So, but yeah, we'll just, we'll just keep on going. We'll keep on trucking. All right, guys, uh, welcome back. And we are now at about 25 grams. 26 grams is about one ounce here. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is kind of in insane, uh, the amount of nasturtiums here. Um, I harvest, yeah, right around 26. We're, we're, we're golden right here. Uh, this is something that I would give to a restaurant. Absolutely not sell this much at a farmer's market. Um, this is this is a lot of nasturtium. That that's that's good for again a, a good thirty salads or more probably. Um, a restaurant would be able to get uh, an entire you know day out of one box um, of nasturtium uh, for sure. Uh, maybe two, but I mean depends on the size of the restaurant obviously. So we'll go ahead and label this here. So. That is it for today. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest the rest of these. As you can see, we did about half. Um, I have one more container here. We're probably gonna get about, um, like I said, two one ounce containers of nasturtium. Um, if you do wanna break it down and go into a half an ounce of nasturtium, that's perfectly acceptable as well. Um, sometimes I'll sell a half an ounce at the farmer's market. I have a container that's actually smaller than, smaller than this as well. Also um, made of cornstarch and biodegradable, all that good stuff. And, uh, and then we'll sell that container. I think I do a half an ounce at the farmer's market um, for like uh, $5. Um, and that does, that does pretty well as, as well. I probably get, so you, you, you get four containers of a half an ounce with this at $5 a pop. This would make the tray about, about the $20 grow. Um, I mean, it's, it's not extremely profitable compared to the other microgreens. Uh, but, you know, a variety is everything. Uh, I, I grow a lot of specialty stuff. Uh, so, so I grow like the main five, six crops when I go to the farmer's market and people always come back for those crops that are most popular. And then I kind of um, splash in um, a few specials here and there. And that gets people to our stand um, because they come back and they're like, oh, what do you have that's special this week? Um, and then they you know, buy something special. So even though it's not the most profitable, it gets, it gets the return of, of clientele and customers back uh, to, to your table um, at the farmer's market for sure. So um, like I was saying, um, you can see here we have a, uh, leaves that are not quite there yet. Um, they're either small or on the mediums, the small size. 
Um, and you have a couple little baby leaves here as well. Um, I'll actually put this back on the shelf, like I was saying, after we're done harvesting. And um, I'll let them grow a little bit longer. Um, and then I'll just clip them as I want. And I use them for myself, for my own salads, fresh. Uh, and, that, and that works really good. I won't harvest these and, re and sell this after this after the first day of harvest, just because, like I said, um, it does lack a little bit of quality um, after you do cut for the first time. But again, that's up to you and, and your location and um, you know whether or not you're okay with selling to your clients like that. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, next grow. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, Peter here from Princeton Microgreens. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or questions, feel free to leave them below in the comment box. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.